Hi, and welcome to the third section of boosting your React productivity with Webpack. In this section, we will be covering a few more quality of life issues that arise whenever using Webpack in combination with React projects. First of all, we will discuss about how we want to serve our project, and we will find out the best way to serve and view project files while in development. In order to do that, we will have a look at a Webpack plugin called Webpack Dev Server. So we will have a look at the dev server does and how it runs. And after that, we will have a look at how to configure it so that it will help us have a better workflow when developing React applications. Towards the end of the section, we'll also have a, a quick look at code splitting with React Router. So we will try again to reduce the load times of our application. And we'll have a look at how to refactor React components to load only when they're needed. With that in mind, let's jump straight into using the dev server and getting it set up for our project. First of all, we will be removing our HTTP server that we've been using so far to serve the content. Then we will add our Webpack dev server and we will make sure we update all the scripts in our project to reflect those changes. Before we jump into the coding and configuration bit, let's have a quick recap of how we've been serving content so far. So in here, we have a small diagram of how our system works at this point. So we have our dependencies libraries in here. We have our components that we've written in our app.js. All those files, all those JavaScript modules and, and files go into Webpack. Webpack then will output a vendor.js file, which is our dependencies libraries. And we'll also generate a bundle.js file, which Webpack will then place in this directory of our project. Now, in a separate process, we're also running our HTTP server, which constantly checks our dist folder to see if there have been any changes made. Once a change is loaded, then the client can refresh the browser and you will receive the new files from HTTP server. So as we can see, at the moment, we have two processes running in parallel. So we have Webpack watching our files for any changes and making sure it generates new vendor.js and bundle.js whenever needed. And we also have our HTTP server, which constantly watches this folder and then serves the files to the client. What we would like to do is simplify this process a little bit. And Webpack has a, right, a tool that does exactly that, which is called Webpack Dev Server. So the first part of our workflow will be the same as previously. We have our dependencies, we have our files, and they all get bundled together into Webpack. Now, one thing that Webpack has access to is the Webpack dev server. What Webpack dev server will do, it will run in parallel with Webpack. However, it will be part of the Webpack process. And this will allow Webpack to serve the files directly to the client's browser. This means that we can remove the extra HTTP server module from our project, which is no longer necessary because Webpack can perform the same function using the dev server. So let's go back to our code files and do just that. So first of all, make sure you close the dev server. If you have it running, usually just press Control C, it will kill the server and then you will be able to work with it. So let's firstly remove it from our application. This step is not necessary, but it's good practice to remove unwanted packages. So we will do yarn, remove, and then we have our HTTP server. So let's get it out of our package as we do not need it anymore. Once that is done, we can have a look into our code editor in package.json and the HTTP server will be removed from our dependencies. One thing we will also need to do is make sure we remove the script as this package is no longer installed. So we do not need the script anymore. Let's make sure we do that as well. Now that we have removed our server, there is no way to serve our files to the client. So let's deal with that by inst quickly installing our webpack dev server. So in order to do that, you do yarn, add webpack dev server, and then make sure you install it as a dev dependency. And once the package is installed, as you can see, it's been added to our project. What you can do in order to serve your application is go into node modules, modules, and then in bin, and then just run webpack dev server. This is where webpack dev server is installed by default. So if we run this command, we'll see that our project is running at localhost 8080, and then webpack will automatically run and build our project.
project at this point. So if we go back into the browser, as you can see, the page has just refreshed and we have access to our project in the browser the same way we did with the HTTP server. The advantage of doing this is, as you can see, Webpack is being run by default in the watch mode. So we do not have to set that command anymore. So if we make any changes to our application, let's say we change the home, or let's change the search page. Let's just add some text somewhere in it. Pull this back instead of close. And when we go into the browser, you will see Webpack Dev Server will automatically reload the page. And when we go into our into here, we can go. It will automatically update the page or the component you want to work with. So that is a huge advantage. We do not have to refresh the page anymore. I'll add this browser to my editor window just so you can see exactly how it works in real time. Uh, let me just quickly close the inspector. And you will see that once I make a change in my code, the page will refresh automatically. So let's change something on the home screen. We'll call this my reads app again. And once you save, you will see the browser reloads automatically and updates your changes. Now, this is the base, the most basic way of running Webpack Dev Server. Uh, however, just typing that command every time in terminal might not be ideal. So as you can imagine, we can write a script in our package.json that will handle this command. So going back into our package.json, what I usually do is replace the dev script whenever I do have a dev script with my Webpack Dev Server. So let's do just that. We will type in Webpack Dev Server in here. And now if we go into our terminal, if we close the build and just do yarn run dev, it will automatically build the project, run the dev server and serve the application into our browser. So as you can see, we have the application running on localhost 8080. One thing to keep in mind is that whenever using the Webpack dev server, the files are not being served off of the hard drive, so the build process never happens. Webpack Dev Server keeps all the bundle JS and the vendor JS and all the other files generated by Webpack in memory. So you will not have those files into this. So if we go in here and we just run our clean script, which just removes the disk folder. So if we go into terminal, let us run yarn run clean. And as you can see, it has removed our disk directory from the project. However, if we refresh our application, it is still running. That's because Webpack Dev Server does not load files off the disk. It loads them from memory and it will always generate them. Since we've done that, we also will need to create a build script that will allow us to actually generate those files in order for us to be able to distribute them. So let's do a build script as well. And in this build script, we'll just run webpack and we will add a slash d because we're running it in development and that's pretty much the basics of configuring webpack dev server as you can see the install is really simple and it can help you replace other packages that you might have been using for serving the content before such as in our case the https server of course this is just a basic way of running the dev server and it can also be configured to perform some more advanced tasks as well and running it.